Hello again. Welcome to the journey. So in the last couple of weeks, uh, we were discussing about uh, the journey that the Lord is taking us through and the challenges that we face on the journey. And we uh, discussed and went through in deep dive uh, sessions about the different types of uh, spirits, different types of challenges that we face in our lives as we go on this journey. And how from Exodus 23 and Deuteronomy and Numbers, we extracted uh, quite a few examples and applied them in our lives, in the modern day lives. As we are living in the New Testament, we also took uh, many examples and many lessons from the OT or the Old Testament and applied it into our lives as we are living in the New Testament. So this series, I'm going to talk about five T's or five T's, T for T. So uh, the five T's here, as the Lord was revealing to me, is also very significant as uh, the whole essence of our journey. What Lord uh, takes us through in this journey, uh, I would say this revelation is more holistic uh, than the journey that we discussed in a granular level. Of course, because of the need of time, we discussed about the challenges on the journey. But right now, let's take a very simple approach to uh, the, uh, the total transformation or the total expectation of our Lord in our lives. So we need to go to the basics. Right? So I would call this session as back to the basics. So when in our, in our lives also, whenever that we do something complicated, we always go back to the basics. We tell our friends, okay, let's go back to the beginning and start over. We tell our children, okay, uh, what you are doing is wrong. Okay, go back to the beginning. Even in our corporate world, we always say, uh, fine, something is complicated and cannot be resolved. Let's go back to the ABCs or square one. We use many terms in order to understand, okay, go back to the beginning in order to understand uh, or to get a clear picture of our journey. So these five T's I'm going to talk about is also uh, taking us back to the beginning, even beyond Exodus. I'm taking you through to Genesis. So the five T's, let me introduce them uh, first to you. The first T is called transfer or transferring, uh, or the Lord has transferred us, in, in other words. And the second T is about transformation. And the third T is about transportation. And the fourth T is transmutation. And the fifth one is transcending or transcension. So five T's, I'll explain them what they are. I mean, these are the five T's that the Lord revealed to me or put in my mind. So this is not an MBA lecture or a PhD lecture. It's just that I just simply want to pour out my heart of as, as to what the Lord told me, and I'm just sharing that with you very candidly. So f forgive me of certain words, if they are a little bit grave, a little bit deep, I'm trying to explain it as much as possible in the most simplistic manner. Uh, so if you have any concerns and questions, please do write to us and even call me, uh, those whom I meet very often on the platform. So please do. I'm ready to explain, ready to clarify and call Brother Dilantha uh, for any clarifications as well. So we are here to explain that deeply. So let's take the first T of the five T's. That is the, the theme of transferring. Okay. What do you mean by the transfer? So we do a lot of transfers. So we do money transfers. We do uh, uh, job transfers. We do transfers from one end to the other end. That's all what you call a transfer. And in the process of transferring, what do we try, what do we try to do here? From one state to another state, from one condition to another condition is what you call transferring from one end to the other end. So in the essence of or in the context of uh, the Lord's expectation in our lives, what do you expect or what do we expect? or to understand the state transfer. The transfer is the state that we used to live and the state that we are right now and the state that the Lord wants to take us 
in the ultimatum. So state we used to live, the state we are right now, and the Lord taking us to the next state. So that this journey is being, we are being transferred from one point to the other point. But there's a most significant transfer that took place when you and I got baptized and we were born again. That's the most significant transfer that we uh, had in our lives. From that of our old self, that we died to our old selves, crucified ourselves, our flesh, to our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. We accepted it internally, inside and out, and we transferred ourselves from that of the sinful nature to that of the new man. And the Bible says, behold, the past is forgotten. A new life has begun. Everything in the past is gone up. So the new life has begun. So we have been given a new lease, a new chapter in our lives. That's the sort of a trance as well. Now, let's take a pause there and try to look back. Why did we need a trance of such nature? Why did, why did we have to go through a baptism or a baptizo or uh, a complete transformation in our lives? If we, are, we think as we are perfect in that case, there would not have been any occasion for us or reason for us to have a transfer like that. So if the Lord has created us perfect, yes, he created us perfect. And there has to be something missing in our lives or something that which we did do that did not meet the standards of the Lord that have his expectations that required for us to be transferred from that of the state that we had fallen in order to level up with the expectation of what our Lord wanted us to achieve. So it's a very simple back to the basic lesson. So if you look at uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, when Lord created man, let's read. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. In his own image and in the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. So you and I have been created male and female in the same image of God. In Greek, we use these terms selem and demu to mean, to mean image and likeness of God. So, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. The instructions are very simple. The Lord tells us, okay, you need to subdue everything. I have created you, have look, behold, I have given everything which I have most laboriously made. I, I took a lot of time, a lot of detail went into this. I had to rest on the seventh day as well because I took a lot of time in order to create this and I have created you. Now it's a matter of you taking dominion over it and multiply. A very simple thing to do. It's more like, you know, a father having worked all his life very hard, earned a million or billions of rupees or dollars and earned a fortune and telling the son, son, now it's time for you to take care of it. Subdue all the uh, companies that I have, control over them, right? have dominion over it and gives it to the son and the son messes it up. So it's a similar thing that which happened to us as well. Our Lord the Father created everything, a perfect world, a world more perfect, much, much more perfect than which we are living in right now. A beautiful place and gave it to us and we messed it up right royally. So in the same chapter, in verse uh, 31, Lord says, Then God saw everything that he made and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Then God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So 
he saw that what he had made was very good. And that good that which he made for our purpose, for our sake, he wanted us to take dominion over. Then in chapter 3, temptation fell on man. And man gave that his birthright. I, I don't think it's wrong of me to say that's a birthright that the Lord gave us as we were born, as we were created. He gave us a right to take care of the garden and the whole world to that matter. That birthright we partook for emotions and lust and desires when the temptation came on, on top of us. And what happened? The devil was so cunning in chapter 3, verse 1. Genesis Chapter 3, verses 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? It says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, more wise and more cunning at the same time. So, easily deceived the innocent man and the woman and took that birthright and made an exchange whereas that we were on top with the authority and the devil was on the bottom and when he deceived us he came on to the top level and made us go down to the bottom so there was a transferring of positions or realms from, similarly, from North Pole to the South Pole. If we were on the North Pole, devil was on the South Pole. I'm just taking this example. With the deception of the devil, what he did was, he came to the North Pole, kicked us out of it to the South Pole. So, devil did not have authority over the, over the realm that the Father, the Lord gave us. In other words, as I took in, a, in the previous example, a rich father... A benevolent father who had earned his life life savings and lifetime of work giving it to the son an innocent son and somebody comes in and deceives him and takes that position and bereaves him or deprives him of every every privilege that the father has given and taken his position in that case and kicked the son out so in that way we also were subject to that kind of a deception by the devil. And when that happened, what happened? We came down and devil went up. So mind you, my brothers and sisters, devil has about six abodes or dwelling places. So what are these six abodes or dwelling places of the devil? First, he was in heaven with the father along with the angel. Then he was in the Garden of Eden, we see in chapter chapter 3 of Genesis. Then he is in the atmospheric level and the earthly level. Then in the, in the days to come of the Lord, he will be put into uh, abyss for a certain period of time. Then after that, he will be put into lake of fire. So six abodes of the devil and six signifies six of man of error. So all these errors of number six that which signifies of man, which uh, you may have uh, gone through in detail, Brother Dilant would have also exhorted you in detail in, in our channel. You can check for those videos as well. Six of man, of error, the devil signifies of the six abodes, so the six manifestations of the places that the devil dominates over. And the last two places that the devil dominates, he doesn't dominate. Actually, the Lord dominates over them. The ultimate punishment that he gets. So, I just deviated a little bit to explain to you about the six abodes of the devil. But what is important to us is right now, the devil has the ability, having taken our authority on the heavenly places in Garden of Eden, and in the atmospheric level as well as on the earthly level, the devil has the ability to transcend or to uh, go up and down of all these levels at any given moment. But poor us, we fell on the earth. The Lord banished us out of Garden of Eden. 
and we have to toil we have to go through everything and the devil the birthright which we had is dominant over the principalities of the air in the atmospheric level as well as in the garden of eden and the throne room of the lord is always there so people some people say that uh, devil faced lord uh, face to face uh, in the old testament before our lord jesus christ uh, was crucified correct it is true in the book of job we can say we can see that along with the rest of the angels the devil came and met lord and lord asked have you considered my uh, servant job but in the new testament also uh, let's not forget and devil against the brothers he complains against the brothers before the lord so which means that he still has access to the father he still has access in the seven realms which we have been betrayed or which we have been deceived of but how many of you and i have access to the spiritual realms how many of us have access to the atmospheric level how many of us have access to our lord in that case of course we have the access through our christ jesus because our father says of lord Lord Jesus says I am the way and unless that through me I am the door unless through me if you enter you will not see the light so this is a simple reality so once that we have fallen there had to be somebody to come down to that level from of a higher level in order to save us to redeem us to take up to that give us access or re access or grant us access to that level that we initially possessed let me take an example so this is the example brother dilanta gave me about a good 14 years ago on the very first day that i met him i was uh, a non believer i was of a different religion in desperation uh, uh, although that uh, my body uh, was urging not to go and meet him but in my mind and in my spirit something asked me to okay go what's the harm what do you have to lose by listening to another person so i was so headstrong i was so stubborn i was living in the world and uh, what i mean by living in the world is doing everything under the sun and moon which was like any other uh, crazy person would do so went and listened to him and the first example he took me is roshan consider this while you are in prison if you are in prison uh can another prisoner come and save you if another prisoner a person who is guilty maybe he is escaped the prison or maybe he is uh, out in in the society right and he comes to the prison and tells the uh, the jailer saying okay i want to redeem prashan and jailer will look at him and said uh okay i have seen you somewhere you are a wanted person let me just go through your profile to see okay that fellow has thousands of mistakes errors or thousands of uh, crimes that he has committed then the jailer will grab him also by the neck and put him into the same prison so similarly if you are in prison another person cannot come and save you of the same caliber a person who is bearing the same guilt somebody who does not have any blemish who does not have any sort of a crime record or a track record of any illegal aspect element or anything has to come and save you that is what happens when uh, somebody uh, 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 bails you out as well a person uh, we we call it uh, bailing out of a person uh, by producing i mean by uh, sacrificing yourself more than money so when a person of unblemished character a person that who does not have any sort of guilt when they put into the computer so see okay that person that doesn't have any record right so that kind of a person can come and bail you out so of course we find if you have we do something uh, wrong in the world and if you are convicted uh, there could be people to come and i mean bail us out but in the spiritual realm when we are at fault and when we are guilty and we have been deceived by the, uh, the 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 most cunning and the shrewd and the most wisest and the cunning creature 
ever made on, on in, in the atmosphere, in the spiritual realm. How can a, a spiritual being can come and help us in order to bail us out? Who is capable of giving us or turning the shift or shifting us from that of the current state to the old state or the previous glorified state? Nobody else can do it. And our Lord the Father knows that very well. That is the reason why he sent his only begotten son, who is of no sin, unblemished character. Nobody can point a finger at him and say, okay, you did this in the past. And I know of your character in the past. Nobody can do that. And he sent his only begotten son in order to die for us and come to our prison on earth, live like a prisoner and to liberate us. And he did the exchange. He transferred good to bad and took our bad and gave us his good and shifted us in the spiritual realm or depolarized the whole process and took us back to the rightful place and made us up, lifted us up and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So the realm that we fell from, what he came and did was gave us the right or the key access back or created a corridor for us to go back and sit on that. So as I mentioned, if you are convicted of something, if you are in prison or behind bars, somebody can come and bail you out. That's very physical. But in the spiritual realm, the only way that this can happen is through the spiritual transaction. And a spiritual transaction to take place as somebody who is pure, somebody who is unblemished, and a complete pure spirit or the high, high, the most highest spirit can only do that. Because the devil is also a spirit. Those are spiritual beings. So the things that which we cannot see. So then only the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit and Lord Jesus Christ came and took the form of man took our sins and did the divine exchange and placed us back in heavenly places where we belong. My brothers and sisters, this is exactly what happens when we uh, take our baptism. When we are baptized, when we tell the Lord, Lord, you are my only savior. You are my only master. I have served the devil, the master. I have been deceived. And right now into my life, I invite you and without you my Lord I cannot get out of this situation I cannot from this earthly realm that the fallen state cannot be redeemed I cannot be redeemed without you and when we sincerely make that confession that's why it's a confession first that we need to identify that we have fallen first that we need to identify that there's nothing we can do about it right now and admit yes that we did a mistake is it that you and I did the mistake? Isn't it that you can, sometimes that I ask this question, isn't it Adam and Eve who did the mistake? I was just born to this world, even without my consent, and my mother and father decided that I should be born. And right now I am born into a sinful world and somebody else did some mistake and I am suffering right now. So isn't it rational to think like that? Right. I mean, even the Bible, uh, some Pharisees ask, is it, uh, the child who has done, uh, who has sinned. The Pharisees also ask, is it this man who has sinned? Just to find out, okay, whether that person has had a previous life birth, right? Previous life in a different realm or a different world. So Lord Jesus says, no. It's not the man, right? It's the sin that which is transferred spiritually by blood. From that of the man that first committed it. So there's in this world there's nobody who has not sinned because that sinful blood transferred from Adam downwards in our lineage even flows down to me, even to my child, my children's children and likewise until you put a stop to that and do a blood transfusion with that of our Lord Jesus when we accept him as our Lord 
the first realization of that is, as I mentioned, back to the basics, is the first realization is that you are sinful. I mean, we need to take our wheels off and the mask out and just be very honest and truthful to the Lord. At least to Him, let's be, be like that. We need to say, Lord, this is that's the conversation that you happen to have with Him. Lord, I am a sinful person. I try my level best to cover it up to the world. But in the heart of hearts, deep inside of me, I know the things that I have done. And my heart always, that's why David said, my heart, search me, O oh Lord, my heart. David, being such a, such a great king, a man after Lord's heart, often asks the Lord to search his heart. So in our heart of hearts, if we search like that, as like David did, we would understand that we have done a lot of sin, that we are not perfect. We are totally imperfect. And the sheer realization of that as the first step is enough for the Lord to have compassion on us. That's why the Lord said sometimes, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you don't need big faith. You don't need faith uh, developed after 40 days and 40 nights of fasting. All you just need is a little bit of faith, a little bit of candidness, a little bit of honesty at at least in the tiniest form of honesty, like a master say. Just say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I did wrong. It's more like uh, my little son coming to me and telling me, Dada, I did a mistake. He can't still speak, but when he, the, his facial expressions make all the world to me. When he does a mistake, I look at him and you know I, so I know his face. So can my little son, who is only two years of age, can he speak? He cannot speak eloquently like you and me. He doesn't have all the words in the world. He only knows a couple of words. But when he does a mistake, he comes and looks at me with his compassionate eyes, in his sorrowful eyes, in his eyes that uh, which tells the whole story. Same manner, if he does, if if we do a mistake, and we go to our Father even without any words. Just go to Him with your heart. Lord sees the heart. In First Samuel chapter 16, uh, when Samuel the prophet went to uh, anoint David, and he met with all his elderly brothers, those are more handsome, more stout, more strong, much stronger than David. And even prophet uh, Samuel was deceived. He thought, okay, this is the person. But Lord said, no. Lord does not look at the outward appearance of the person. Lord does not look at the uh, number of words that you have in your vocabulary, how eloquent you are, how many languages that you speak. He doesn't look at whether you are an MBA or a PhD. He doesn't look at whether that you are qualified, whether you are a pastor or a prophet or evangelist. He doesn't look at those qualifications. He just simply needs your candid, honest submission to him. Just like my little son does. He comes to me and looks at me when he has done some mistake. His expression and the look on his face tells everything. The same manner we go to our father and the look on our face and look on our heart will tell everything to him. So that is akin to, that is similar to having a little seed of mustard seed a little tiny mustard seed. So, with that candidness, we go to our Father, ask for forgiveness, and be honest and acknowledge our sins, acknowledge our shortfalls, and ask the Lord Jesus to come into our lives and to turn us inside out. So, this is the transferring from that of our old state to that of the new state that we are talking about. So this is the first T that we discussed. So back to the basics. We had a very glorified life. We had a very rich life. We had a whole garden, the whole world which the Lord has bequeathed or the Lord has given to us. Because of our, I would say, too much of innocence, all things we did not know 
since we did were not wise and the devil is so wise we were tempted in by emotions and we gave our birthright transacted our birthright and lost it to devil and we fell how to get it back that beautiful place and the the most exquisite place the lord had made is to invite our lord jesus into our lives acknowledge and admit that we are fallen fallen spiritually yes fallen physically as well admit that we have done mistake the only thing that which deters us from doing so is our pride in our lives because how many of you will see i mean in in my corporate experience i see in the new generation how many people would say please how many people would say sorry how many people would really do apologize for any mistake that they have done the word please the word sorry is out of the vocabulary of these people and more and more the hearts of these people of the people those who are surrounding us are getting hardened more and more their hearts are turning like stone cold that stone because the humility the humbleness docility and those attributes are no longer visible in these people anymore so pride makes us or stops us from humbling ourselves lord jesus being god himself he had all the authority all the power on earth if he wanted at the garden of gethsemane when he prayed when he thought about the events that were to unfold before him the pain the excruciating pain he had to go through not because of the jews mind you because of you and me the jews had already been liberated is a promise the lord has already given in the old testament lord jesus went through such excruciating pain not because of them is all because of us in a later study that i will take you through feeding the 4000 feeding the 5000 and how the lord thought about you and me while feeding the 4000 and the 5000 there's a deep secret which is hidden in those stories that's for another uh, uh, study and another discussion but in the garden of gethsemane when the lord uh, lord jesus thought about you and me he had all the power in the world to destroy if he had just one word if he had uttered to the angels okay let alone god he being himself let alone lord jesus but when the angels surrounded him and ministered to him he had just one word to the archangel one word to michael or gabriel they would have bounced at the opportunity of destroying the whole world that's it so he would have done that but he did not do it he humbled himself he humbled himself before the father saying father however much difficult it is still not my will but your will do we my brothers and sisters humble ourselves like that do we take off our mask right ladies put this face mask or something take it off just imagine the situation like that take off our mask take off our veil take off our uh, pretense that we have to the outside world and naked as we are spiritually do we go to our father and just say father i humble myself here is my heart yes a lot of people will go to church kneel down humble him themselves for the sake of doing it but the lord does not see it we do it for the sake of doing it we do it for the sake of religion religiosity no out, out of compelence out of tradition out of culture out of ethics we do it that's not what the lord wants so what does the lord want he wants us to be completely prostrate and to say lord i am completely empty fill me in because i am ashamed of who i am so sometimes some sociological studies will say uh, or psychological studies will say you are condemning yourself 
Where's your self-esteem? Where's your self-confidence? You are destroying your self-confidence out in the world. Yes, we need to destroy our self-confidence in order to fill with the confidence of our Lord. What's the, what's the use of having self-confidence and we eternally face troubles in our world? What's the use of putting on this garment? For me, what's the use of putting on this uh, blazer or the coat? And this gives me self-confidence. When I walk out in this, people respect me fine. What's the use of it? Does it liberate me from the uh, lake of fire? Does it liberate me from uh, the judgment day? But in my heart of hearts, I know I, am, I have done something wrong. In the heart of hearts, I know that I am not perfect. And just because that I am wearing a blazer, just because that I just... Uh, uh, get down from an expensive vehicle and people respect. That's all an illusion in this transit world that we are living in. Yes, we need them. Yes, we need to travel. We need to look good to give glory to our God. Yes, all these things will come to us the minute we humble ourselves. The minute that we tell our Father, Lord, I don't have anything. Fill me up. Whether you give it to me or not, as Lord Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, your will be done, not my will. It's your will. So if you honestly, candidly mean it in the deepest of your heart and feelings, Lord will not turn away from a contrite heart. He will not. Believe me, my brothers and sisters, I have tried this prayer uh, I was searching, what does it really mean by praying to the Lord with your heart? I have done it many times, knelt, prostrate, I have uh, gone on pilgrimage to Israel and Western Wall and banged my head on the Western Wall and made vows, gone to Sea of Galilee and all the places our Lord Jesus had trodden and even collected stones and uh, memorabilia out of those places and prayed and prayed and prayed morning to evening. I fasted and prayed, which I couldn't do fasting more than five hours though. I still can't. But i had done all that. But many a times the Lord hasn't heard me. What was it the point that the turning point in my life is that when everything went wrong and everything was going left, and this blazer, the money, the vehicle that I drive, the positions that I hold, the things that I know, the language that I speak, but couldn't come and help me. The only person who could come and help me is my Lord. And that point of desperation and despondency, just go to him and just say, Father, I have messed up big time. Nothing in this world that I have done, out of religiosity, out of tradition, out of what the people do and what people tell you to do out of what is written in books or what you get as degrees, MBAs, PhDs and out of that, all that is done as Paul said. It reminded me of very often, many times in my life, all that is done. That is, in other words, bullshit. Right. So, all that did not help me in the time of distress. And I was going through a very bad patch. Psychologically and physically. First physically, then it's psychologically. And the doctors told me, you are at a point of no return. The science in this world, which is so called the so much advanced science, couldn't help me or save my life. At that point, all what I have right now is of no use. It will vanish right before your very eyes. All the luxuries that I have enjoyed of and even what I have right now is of no use at all when you get that bad news. So what's the use? So at that moment of desperation, you go down on your knees, saw with your tears and seek the heart of the Lord. Lord is there to help you. I've experienced it in my heart. That's why I'm telling this story. I'm trying my level best. I don't know whether I'm 
effective in telling this i don't know whether i'm uh, using the right words uh, but the, the 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 compassion and the the passion that i have to tell this and share this with you somehow i don't know whether you you can criticize this discussion you can criticize our uh, ministry you can criticize this channel you can criticize uh, me it doesn't matter but all i'm telling is i'm pouring my heart and my experience out so my brothers and this sisters please humble ourselves let's humble ourselves let's take the veil out and go before the lord with a broken heart all our hearts are broken nobody's heart is perfect because we are in a broken world we have fallen to a broken world because we gave our right to the devil from a perfect heart to a broken heart and what we do from cradle to grave everybody is trying to mend that heart with all the things that they can gather from the outside world qualifications money luxuries pleasures those are the things that people do in order to mend or to prepare that heart mostly outwardly but the wound the brokenness the scars of that heart still remain they are never out the only person who can cure that completely and give you a new life a new heart a new beginning a fresh start and restore you to that of the level that you lost is our lord jesus christ no other religion no other belief in this world has that ability to transfer you from one state to the other state permanently of course i'm very respectfully telling this there are religions there are beliefs they can transfer you from state to state but not a permanent state not that of the state that which we lost but the perfect place that our lord jesus or our father created us in genesis chapter 1 as we read so my brothers and sisters it all starts with our humility let's ask our lord jesus the holy spirit cut come into our lives daily we need to do this that is why we need to daily die to ourselves in other words in my i strongly i believe something like this i was baptized 14 years ago it's only this year in the beginning of this year i realized that i need to be baptized almost every day so i thought my baptism 14 years ago is more than enough once and for all done paid for my sins and even for the sins that i was to commit after that what a what a lie it was absolutely lie and a deception that i was living in i was reading this uh, i many times i have read die to yourself on a daily basis and take your cross and follow me i read it many times but it only struck me this year So in other words the holy spirit convicted me son you need to be baptized every day that means we need to have that so go under the water under the word of our lord and come out of it and uh, be filled with the holy spirit every day die to our flesh every day early in the morning my brothers and sisters when we wake up how many thoughts what's the first thought that comes to your mind early in the morning analyze that thought very carefully what's the very first thought enter because after your deep sleep you wake up and open your eyes and the very first thought that comes to your mind is it a sinful thought is it a pleasurable thought is it a thought that which brings glory to our god 99% of the thoughts that the first very thought that we get is something that we did in yesterday somebody whom we hate today how can we devise some plan against somebody how can we turn a brother against somebody how can we excel in our lives how can we do some is a more canonite thoughts we went through the spirits the six spirits it's a more carnal canonite thoughts 99.9% of our thoughts are carnal as we wake up in the morning carnal in the physical sense carnal in the uh, uh, even in the spiritual sense the very first thought that which comes to us 
early in the morning as we wake up. With that carnal thought, if we continue the whole of our day, how much of wrong that we will be doing in our bodies? With that thought in my in in my mind, I've done it, of course. When I wake up in the morning, of course, my thoughts are not pure. Even right now, as I'm doing this recording and when I go to sleep and wake up in the morning, my thoughts are totally carnal. Thoughts are, what I mean by carnal is of this world. Suddenly, something, a situation, an experience that somebody has some done something wrong will come to my head. And automatically, I will begin to retaliate in my body. Yeah, I call that fellow and give him a good lesson. That's the kind of thought that we have. So that is why the Holy Spirit reminded me, son, you need to die today. Not physically, spiritually. Have that so. Die to yourself, to your carnality. Through the word. And be, you bathe in this world. And come out of it. Fresh. Bear the cross and walk. So it's a conscious effort. It's not an easy task. It's not, it's not something that which we can accomplish with our carnal, fleshly uh, engagement. It's not easy. Now, please don't misunderstand me. Don't jump off the 50th floor of your building and just commit suicide. No, dying to yourself is not that. Dying to yourself is when that thought comes first into your head in the beginning of the day. Be conscious of it. If you want, go back to the same place that you were sleeping or sit down on a chair and just think, Lord, this thought is calm. And I know during the course of the day that I may have a lot of encounters that will bring the carnality out of me. Father, I die, die to this flesh today. May the Holy Spirit fill my life. And I earnestly ask you, uh, the Holy Spirit to fill my heart so that I can face the challenges of the day, not from my eyes, but through your eyes in me. So that is being baptized on a daily basis. And do this over a period of time. Think about the changes that will happen. Mind you, my brothers and sisters, there will be a lot of changes in your lives. One thing that I used to do, I used to complain about people. I used to always complain about people. Nobody is good to me. I, I may not show it outwardly. But when I meet with somebody, talk with somebody and all that, okay, that there's something wrong that I can tell about that person. At least I come home and tell my wife, okay, you know, that person, although he's like that, he's like this. Our human nature is that. That is our fallen state. You always complain about something. That is what the Lord said. When you, lest his eyes be opened, their eyes be opened. Now, eyes are open. The carnality of our eyes are open. That's why we complain. That's why do we murmur. That's why we devise plans to uh, uh, create division against brothers. That's the carnality of nakedness of our eyes that has been opened. And we comp I used to complain about almost everybody. But the Holy Spirit reminded me one thing and he gave me a challenge. He told me, son, for one hour, can you stop complaining about somebody? One hour. Just be very mindful and stop complaining about a person. I did that. I practiced it with greatest difficulty. But still a thought will come. You know, that person did something like this. And within that hour, that very person will call you also. Ah, this person. Right. And even in my mind, I may have, uh, you know, spoke against that person. But the Holy Spirit told me, you do it, practice for one hour, practice for one day. Stay complaining without anybody, or complaining about anybody for one day. Mind you, my brothers and sisters, the day felt so peaceful. Difficult to do. But these are the instructions the Holy Spirit gave me. Stop complaining. Stop saying bad things about people. Just focus on the Lord. Whenever a thought comes, subject it to the authority of our Lord Jesus by His word. And focus on Him. 
die to yourself and live for him on a daily basis lord jesus did not complain about anybody in throughout his ministry three and a half years until he went to the cross he did not complain to anybody he healed he exhorted he advised he taught he did miracles wonders but he never complained he never even complained about anybody to his father even even in secret that is the the secret of his strength the same manner my my brothers and sisters let us also strive try as paul said this ra- race is very difficult it's long but paul in the end of the day he says i have run the good race and a crown was waiting for him the same manner we shall if paul could do it as a mortal man we can also do it he is a living example for us so my brothers and sisters i took a very long time trying to explain this i do not know whether i uh, side tracked or deviated but pardon me for that forgive me so on the very first t of our discussions of being transferred uh, this is what i want to tell you so just in a nutshell we were transferred from we dropped from the state of uh completeness to that of in imperf- perfection to imperfection and we traded our position with that of the devil and lord jesus came and transferred us back to that old state but that is not a one time doing of our baptism no we need to do it almost on a daily basis die to ourselves being transferred almost every day to that of the state of our lord jesus so in the process of doing it he will perfect us and he will establish our transfer and make it permanent then we move on uh, to the other t's or the four rest of the four t's that i discussed about uh, in the beginning and i explained uh, in our subsequent session so until we meet uh, in a couple of days god bless you